and girls, let's look at number one. Read the following claim. So this is a reason. Players are not fairly paid for their work on the U.S. women's soccer team. Which sentence from the article provides the best support for this above statement? So which one of these is good evidence for this reason? A. However, the suit states they receive inferior wages, working conditions, and publicity from U.S. soccer. B. Under the Equal Pay Act and Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, it seeks corrective action as well as money paid for past damages. C. Using an example of 20 games where each U.S. team went undefeated, a women's base salary is already about 30000 less than her male counterpart. D. In addition to pay that complaints include inferior playing fields, lack of private flights, insufficient promotion, and publicity compared with their male counterparts. So think about which one of these evidence examples proves this reason that they are not paid fairly. Two, read the paragraph from the section, Williams insisted on equal pay. There is a direct line from Kings to Venus Williams, who fought for equal pay. Williams convinced Wimbledon, the sport's most popular tournament, to pay its male and female champions the same in 2007. There is a direct line in turn to the women's soccer team's decades-long fight for better pay and working conditions. What conclusion is best supported by the above paragraph? So if this is the evidence, which, one, which reason does it prove? A. The women's soccer team's push for better pay is a part of a larger movement for gender equality. B. The women's soccer team is likely to win improved pay and working conditions after the World Cup. C. Most sports other than soccer already pay male and female athletes the same amount of money. D. Female soccer players are the most underpaid athletes in the United States. Which statement would be most important to include a summary of the article? So basically we're finding what is the central idea, what's the most important thing about this article? A. Hockey players in both the United States and Canada have advocated for better salaries. B. Women in athletics have to balance their jobs with the number of roles and responsibilities off the field. C. Soccer is lagging behind other sports when it comes to treating men and women the same. D. Female U.S. soccer players receive less pay and inferior benefits compared to their male counterparts. Last one. Which of the following sentences from the article includes the central idea of the article? 1. This isn't what champion athletes normally do launch a public fight with their boss at the most critical stage of their athletic preparation. Two, they fight one battle on the field and another battle off it to make their sport better and fairer. Three, she was threatened with being excluded from tennis events by the all-male tennis leadership for launching a women's league in the early 1970s. Four, in addition to pay, their complaints include inferior playing fields, lack of private flights, insufficient promotion, and publicity compared with their male counterparts. So A is one and two. So let's read those together and see which one is the central idea. This isn't what champion athletes normally do. Launch a public fight with their boss at the most critical stage of their athletic preparation. Two. They fight one battle on the field and another battle off it to make their sport better and fair. So if you think that's a central idea, circle A. B, three and four. So let's go up here to three and four. She was threatened with being excluded from tennis events by the all-male tennis leadership for launching a women's league in the early 1970s. In addition to pay, their complaints include inferior playing fields, lack of private flights, insufficient promotion, and publicity compared with their male counterparts. C. 1 and 3. This isn't what champion athletes normally do. Launch a public fight with their boss at the most critical stage of their athletic preparation. She was threatened with being excluded from tennis events by the all-male tennis leadership for launching a women's league in the early 1970s. D. 2 and 4. They fight one battle on the field and another battle off it to make the sport better and fair. In addition to Pay, their complaints include inferior playing fields, lack of private flights, insufficient promotion, and publicity compared with their male counterparts.